Hi all, I'm Dr. Jennifer McGowan, physical therapist, owner of Regenerate Physiotherapy. Today, I'm going to do a little workshop on your pelvic floor and core after giving birth, um, or whenever that may have been, five months ago, 12 years ago. Um, this presentation was developed by our doctoral intern and myself. So I'll first start with sharing the screen. And if you have any questions, I'm always a big fan of telling you to send me an email um, and we are also having an opportunity where you can book um, free discovery or in-person sessions. So there will be information shared with that in, um, in below in the comments here. So go ahead and share this. Let me get on here. Um, so a little bit about, here we go, myself, I am um, and I'm the owner of Regenerate Physiotherapy. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist. And Rachel, our intern here, is um, going to be graduating fairly soon and wants to be pelvic PT as well. So here are a couple of goals of the workshop. We're going to definitely talk about how you can contract and relax your pelvic floor when and if you need to do that, um, as well as self-screening for diastasis, um, tips on how to stop leakage of stool or urine. Most often women are experiencing urinary leakage. Not often do you leak stool, but after a grade four tear, you could. Um, and then as well as screen for pelvic organ prolapse and some things to help with any painful intercourse you may be experiencing. First off, I am a physical therapist, like I said, opened my practice about three years ago. These are my kids in here. I've got a seven-year-old, nine-year-old, and my twins are four. After the birth of my twins, I realized how badly I needed the pelvic PT as I was struggling with a significant diastasis, as well as significant back pain, urinary leakage when I would try to get active again. <clears throat> and then having a little bit of painful intercourse as well. I have an Instagram account um, at drjennifer.pelvictherapy. Um, please feel free to follow me on there as I'm trying to put content on almost daily as well as do some weekly lives. And then um, my Facebook page, Regenerate PT. This is our doctoral intern. She's gonna graduate from Georgia Southern University. We've been so lucky to have her for the past eight weeks. And she's gonna be doing some of the free screenings over the next few weeks. She's got an Instagram account, public health underscore PT, and she uh, hopes to start her career in public PT right away this summer. She helped develop this presentation for us. So some questions to really think about as you're listening to this. I, I always like for y'all to write it down. So just write down your specific goal. And then if I didn't get to that, make sure you send a message to us at info at Regen Physiotherapy as well as um, send me an email, which you'll get the contact information here at the end of the presentation. So some big questions I always have women to ponder on is, what was your postpartum plan like after birth? Um, what was your birth experience like? Whether that was, again, five months ago or 15 years ago, um, because that does really influence your pelvic floor muscles. Um, how did you start working out after kids? Do you feel like you had a guidance or any plan? Some of these are rhetorical questions because usually, the answer is they did not have any type of plan set aside for them, which is what pelvic PTs and pelvic floor fitness professionals are really trying to build awareness around how to safely get back into whatever strengthening you'd like to do postpartum. And then again, do you know if you have a pelvic organ prolapse or have you been told? Most women aren't sure what that is. We'll talk about it here a little bit later in the presentation. What is a Kegel? How can you do the Kegel? Like, do you know how to do the Kegel? Do you even need to do the Kegel? And I'll tell you, you're not going to walk away from this presentation knowing if you even need to do the Kegel. It's more on knowing if you know how to do it. And then we'll talk about some places where you might need to strengthen the pelvic floor and some places you might need to relax the pelvic floor. Um, do you know if you have a diastasis? And if so, who screens you for it? Or did you do a self-screen? And then do you have pelvic pain, um, pelvic pain with urination, bowel movements, or intercourse? And then um, constipation is another thing we treat quite a bit here at Regenerate Physiotherapy. So um, pelvic floor symptoms, um, you're going to have things like urinary leakage, um, and you'll see below um, that these can usually resolve a couple months after giving birth, but again, you don't have to live with it. It's just really getting in your way, especially urinary leakage and fecal leakage, um, but pelvic floor pain you might have moderate pain recovering, but again, like any other injury to the muscle, we want to see that resolve within seven to 10 days. If that's not improving within a few weeks, 
Um, seeing a pelvic PT after giving birth is really important so that you can breastfeed and carry your baby and not feel like you're gonna injure the pelvic floor. Um, so urinary leakage is pretty common. Pelvic pain, painful intercourse can be pretty common. Heaviness, fullness, signs of a pelvic organ prolapse can be pretty common because of all of the blood flow. You may not have a prolapse though. So again, this is why it's so important to get screened by a pelvic physical therapist. So you're not kind of guessing and wondering what your symptoms are. Now, if you're not immediate postpartum listening to this and you have these symptoms and they've been going on and on and he's not seen a gynecologist, urogynecologist or pelvic physical therapist, it's really important to know that a lot of these um, functions of the pelvic floor can be resolved without having to um, do surgery or take medications. So six week check with your OBGYN, you wanna really ask, um, or if it's been a couple of years and you're still with the OBGYN, you can always still ask, cause it'll be in your chart. Do you remember how far your, you know, if you had a tear, you know, how, how severe the tear was, um, if you had a episiotomy, how extensive that was, um, do you have a diastasis? That's important to ask if you're pregnant right now listening to this. Um, you want to be screened for a diastasis. Again, pelvic physical therapists specialize in this, but uh, gynecologists know how to screen for it. Um, and then what kind of restrictions do you have? And then any signs of a prolapse. So um, again, some possible things. Initially, you might have some leakage of urine. Not usually you leak stool unless you've had a grade four tear. Sometimes you can leak air though and not have control. So that's something to look out for as well, but there can be heaviness in the vagina or vulva. I like there's a tampon in the vaginal canal, um, pelvic pain or persistent back pain, painful intercourse because of hormonal changes to the vulva. Um, and then in any, in any injury to the muscles of the pelvic floor as well. And then bulging of your abdomen, potentially being a diastasis, that separation, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So before you get back into any workouts, you wanna be cleared by OBGYN um, or see a pelvic physical therapist, especially if you're a CrossFit athlete, runner, high impact athlete, um, or like to do the boot camps at the gym. So you really wanna be um, screened on those muscles to make sure you know how to contract when you're asked to, you don't have that diastasis and you don't have a pelvic organ prolapse. Because if you don't have one now, or if you have a slight one, we wouldn't wanna make that worse. And so it's just screening, it's to empower you and educate you to give you information so you know how to avoid further injury. So pelvic floor, I'm gonna have you all make a bowl with your hands. And that pelvic floor is, that's how your pelvic floor muscles are kind of oriented in your pelvis, it's a bowl. So make that bowl and kind of see they're a hammock. They support the organs. They support the pelvis. They're part of your core. They allow for control of bowel and bladder so that you're not leaking everywhere. It's a pretty powerful muscle group. Um, so we're gonna practice a contraction right now. So wherever you're sitting, I want you to take a big inhale and I can't see your face, so whatever face you make. I want you to try to do the Kegel any way you've been taught how to do one in the past. So go ahead and try to do that contraction and then you relax and then you'll try again. So you'll see there's some multiple cues. I usually like to tell my clients, you're gonna close the elevator door. So as I'm doing this, try to do it with me, close the elevator doors, hold your urine in, and then you're pulling the ball up an elevator. Or some other cues would be like, you're sucking a milkshake through a straw and then you're gonna relax. Again, 50% of women do not know how to do a contraction. So there's no problem if you're not finding the ability to do that. But again, being assessed is so important to just to know. Most of my clients, the reason why it's so important to come in to see me, or I would say the most important thing that happens is when you're seeing a pelvic physical therapist is just gaining aware, awareness and knowing what your your norm is and can you actually contract and just knowing if you need to. Because if you're told by any individual that you just need to go do kegels and don't worry about pelvic PT, I would say that that's totally incorrect because that's not what your pelvic floor may need. So keep practicing as we move on forward here. So after pregnancy, you've had stretching of the abdominal wall, fascia that covers the muscles, uh, potentially some tears, and it's really important to, and you see pressure management, it's very important to learn how to control pressure. And when I say that, all I mean is we 
paying attention to your breath. So if there's a big takeaway with this pressure management you see here in this presentation, it's making sure that you exhale with exertion so that you are not holding breath because if I do that, I'm gonna push pressure into my pelvic floor. So this is a lot of information I'm giving you. Um, and so again, if you've got questions or you'd like to have a free phone consultation, I offer those. And right now um, we're in February and we're offering free in-person discovery visits to get screened for diastasis and see if you can do a Kegel and do a, a movement screen um, and talk to you a little bit more specifically in person. So those are offered here as well. So pelvic organ prolapse, there's a lot of facts here. Um, it's three out of four women get it at some point in their life. Typically, they're going to be um, diagnosed between 60 and 69, but women can also have a higher risk of pelvic organ prolapse if they've had any trauma after birth um, or if they've had a vaginal birth. And I would say they'll see that prolapse kind of show up earlier. Women that have had a cesarean or no children can still have a pelvic organ prolapse. It just may show up later in life after menopause typically or when you're going through the change and there's been some estrogen changes. So symptoms of a pelvic organ prolapse. Fullness, heaviness, like there's a tampon in your vaginal canal. Um, here's some pictures of, of what a pelvic organ prolapse is. And I'll put my little pencil here. So this would be a normal resting pelvic floor. I wouldn't say normal. I would say maybe when you were 20, kind of everything's high, no prolapse. This is what we call the cystocele, or the bladder's coming down a little bit. And what women will tell me is it looks like a bubble of tissue that's coming out of the vaginal opening. And then we've got the rectocele, which is on the back side of the vaginal canal, which again, women will say looks like a bubble or a bulge of tissue. And some of these other ones, uterine prolapse, that's where you would see your cervix is a pretty uncommon, what I see here in the clinic um, at a young age, but as women age and get a little older and they've not had a hysterectomy, sometimes those can become more prevalent. And then you can have um, a couple other of these prolapses here. The biggest takeaway from this, pelvic organ prolapse is not a disease or a pathology. It's annoying and uncomfortable at times. So, Women don't typically have symptoms of a pelvic organ prolapse until it's been moderate to um, give you symptoms like the fullness, back pain. But what I want you to do the next time you're in the bathroom is go ahead and screen yourself. And you can do that sitting on your back. Of course, your clothes will be off, you're opening your labia, you have a mirror near there and you're gonna bear down like you're trying to pass gas or push a bowel movement to see if you see that bulge at all or you can stand and do the same thing. Again, get screened by your gynecologist or public physical therapist to truly see what type you have and what grade it might be. I and mean, again, I wouldn't want you to get too overly concerned with this because if we catch this early, which is why I want people to screen themselves, we can reduce it altogether so that it's not a problem later in life and, and tell you how to prevent it from getting worse. So diastasis recti, this is that separation. Um, a lot of women, this is kind of, um, the rage, hype, if I, if I have to say, it's all over social media. Um, a lot of women think that they may have it. And there's been a big misconception of one size fits all. You can see here that there's just de several different types of diastasis you can have. The most common one that women are gonna see is this one right here that I'm gonna circle. That bulge is above their belly button. So what I want you to really try to do is listen to me on this. We're gonna have you, um, you can do it dur during me talking about this or afterwards, you're gonna lay on your back. And once you're laying on your back, wherever that may be, you're going to lift your head on up and then you're gonna lift your head down. Just see how hard or easy that was. Then I want you to take your fingers, you're gonna put them right around the belly button and you're just going to screen above the belly button, pushing down and below the belly button. Then I want you to lift your head on up, then your fingers will kind of orient this way on the belly. Lifting your head up, you're gonna see, okay, is there a two finger width? All right, we do wanna know the width, but more importantly, when you come up as well, we wanna know how far you can push down. So mine personally was a four finger width and I could push all the way down to my spine. Now it's a one and a half finger width and I get about a half inch in because I've built the strength underneath that 
um, rectus abdominis. I would say that, again, there are not yet clinical grades of diastasis, but in the clinic, I see mild, moderate, and severe diastasis. It's not a one-size-fits-all. And no, you don't always have to avoid sit-ups and planks. You just have to know if you can control your diastasis and bulge in those positions. So again, we're offering free screenings here, and I screen for that in the clinic with all of my clients with my evaluations to see, do you have one? Because some complications with the diastasis can be pelvic organ prolapse, leakage, back pain. That doesn't mean you'll have them if you've got diastasis, but typically when they're more severe, it can lead to those things. So if you're curious about that, please feel free to give us the email, um, ask us questions, we're here as a resource. But again, this is not, it's very difficult to not screen this yourself. So another big thing that women struggle with postpartum is pelvic pain with intercourse, and that would be entry pain or deep penetration pain. So we've got a little statistic, 40 to 50% of women have pelvic pain with intercourse. And so some pretty quick fixes here would be making sure you have a good water-based lubricant, trying different positions, sometimes doing a perineal massage where if you had a tear it can help, so a little massage technique. And then pelvic floor physical therapy. I've been able to help women sometimes in one session, sometimes in four. I had one client struggle with pain for a year and within one session, she said she's 95% better. Because a lot of it's just educating you and knowing what the source of that pain is. But if someone tells you to drink wine and deal with that pain, it's that's not true. Do not listen to that. So anyways, this is again, something that can be pretty disruptive and I don't want you to just live with it. And I think a lot of what we do as women is we normalize things to feel like we're not alone. Um, and it's super common to have this, but I don't want you to feel like you have to live with it. Um, and I have plenty of clients that come to me that haven't yet told their partners that they are having pain point hair course. So this is definitely something a lot of us can swallow and just live with, but it's not something you have to live with if you don't want to. Quickly on some bladder tips. Now, um, I cannot give tons of tips for everything because there's so many different types of reasons why people come to see me. But some really big things to know is that you should be urinating every two to four hours. Your urge should be moderate. You shouldn't really have to wake up at night. And if you are, maybe once. Um, there really isn't a small bladder syndrome. That's kind of a made up term. A lot of what, if you're struggling with urinating um, frequency all the time, it could be that you've trained your bladder to do that. So urinary leakage is again really common. It doesn't mean you have to strengthen things to see results. So um, we're gonna kind of move through here a little bit. So some tips on improving leakage with workouts. I'm always gonna say exhale with exertion, making sure you're getting your stretching and mobility and improving your breath. This is not a um, athlete pelvic floor core, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth there, but I just want you to know that if you are leaking with running, jumping, and it's bothering you, it's really important to get assessed, to know what's going on because it could be coordination issues like I have here. It could be that you're um, holding your breath. It could be that you have um, some endurance issues where maybe you're fatiguing. So we need to try to train you up to that longer run or longer workout. Um, and so let's, yeah, moving on. I just wanna make sure we're good. So I want you to just know recovering after baby, making sure that you get assessed by public PT. It's so important just to get that one evaluation to know what you're working with. Um, and there's, you know, I would say you don't have to live with limits as a mom. So um, when you're lifting that baby, exhale with exertion, um, you wanna make sure that you are um, taking your time postpartum. So anyone pregnant listening to this, two, five, 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 I say five days in bed, five days near your bed, five days arm length away. So about two weeks of bed rest to really let those pelvic floor muscles heal. The biggest thing that I think we do in the society is we, don't rest those pelvic floor muscles enough um, after giving birth. And we think we need to be back to normal by six weeks. And that's just not the case that we all have our own journey. And then if you're not better by six weeks, six weeks, which most of us are not, um, you are in that normal range. Most of us, it's just a journey, learning our new body, learning how to be strong with a pelvic floor that has changed, um, but you can still do all the things that you wanna do. So if you'd like to book a free phone consultation with us, there's our number there, our website. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to hearing any questions you all may have. Bye.